Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Ethanol, also known as ethyl alcohol, is a renewable fuel made from plant materials, commonly referred to as biomass. Its primary sources include corn, sugarcane, and other plant materials rich in sugars and starches. The production of ethanol fuel has gained attention over the years due to its potential to reduce dependence on fossil fuels, mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, and support agricultural economies. But how is ethanol fuel produced? In this video, we will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of ethanol production, breaking down each stage to give you a comprehensive understanding of how this biofuel is made. The production of ethanol begins with selecting the appropriate feedstock. The most commonly used sources for ethanol fuel production are corn in the United States, sugarcane in Brazil, and other plants such as switchgrass, sorghum, and even agricultural waste. The choice of feedstock depends on local availability, agricultural conditions, and economic factors. Corn is the primary source in the U.S. as it is rich in starch, which can be broken down into fermentable sugars. On the other hand, Brazil predominantly uses sugarcane because it contains high concentrations of sucrose, making the conversion to ethanol more efficient. Once the feedstock is selected, it undergoes a series of preparation steps. For corn-based ethanol, the corn kernels are ground into a fine powder known as cornmeal. This increases the surface area of the starch, making it easier to process later. For sugarcane, the process is slightly different. The sugarcane stalks are crushed to extract the juice, which contains the sugars that will be fermented. Any leftover fibrous material known as bagasse can be used to generate energy for the plant or other purposes. The next phase of ethanol production involves breaking down the complex carbohydrates in the biomass into simple sugars. In the case of corn, the starch present in the cornmeal must be broken down into glucose. This is done through a process known as enzymatic hydrolysis, where enzymes called amylases are added to the mixture. Amylases work to break down the starch molecules into smaller chains of sugars, which can later be fermented. During this step, heat is often applied to facilitate the breakdown of starches into simpler sugars, which speeds up the overall process. This process is referred to as saccharification. The result is a sugary slurry, or mash, that contains a high concentration of glucose. If the feedstock is sugarcane, this step is unnecessary, as the sugarcane juice already contains easily fermentable sugars. Fermentation is the critical stage where the simple sugars are converted into ethanol. To achieve this, yeast is added to the sugary mash or juice, depending on the feedstock used. Yeast, a microorganism, consumes the sugars, glucose, fructose, or sucrose, in the mixture and converts them into ethanol and carbon dioxide through a biochemical process known as anaerobic fermentation. The carbon dioxide produced during this process is released into the atmosphere and the ethanol remains in the liquid. Fermentation typically takes place in large fermentation tanks where the temperature and other environmental conditions are carefully controlled to maximize the efficiency of the yeast. In corn-based ethanol production, the fermentation process usually lasts between 48 and 72 hours, depending on the specific production facility and technology used. The resulting product after fermentation is known as beer, a mixture containing about 10% ethanol and 90% water along with solid residues and other byproducts. Once the fermentation process is complete, the next step is to separate the ethanol from the water and other components. This is accomplished through a process known as distillation. In simple terms, 
Distillation takes advantage of the difference in boiling points between ethanol and water. Ethanol has a lower boiling point compared to water, so by heating the mixture, the ethanol vaporizes first. The fermented mixture, or beer, is pumped into a distillation column, where it is heated to the boiling point of ethanol. The ethanol vapor rises through the column, while the water and other heavier substances remain at the bottom. The ethanol vapor is then captured, cooled, and condensed back into liquid form. After the first distillation, the ethanol concentration is around 95%, meaning it still contains about 5% water. At this stage, the ethanol is known as hydrated ethanol, or ethanol fuel that still contains some water. In most cases, ethanol needs to be almost completely free of water before it can be used as a fuel. To achieve this, the ethanol undergoes a dehydration process where the remaining water is removed. The most common method for dehydrating ethanol is through a technique called molecular sieves, which use special materials that can selectively absorb water while allowing ethanol to pass through. Molecular sieves contain tiny pores that are just large enough to trap water molecules while leaving the ethanol molecules intact. As the ethanol water mixture passes through these sieves, the water is absorbed, leaving behind ethanol with a purity of 99% or higher. This highly concentrated ethanol is known as anhydrous ethanol, which is the type typically blended with gasoline to produce ethanol-based fuels, such as E10, 10% ethanol, 90% gasoline, or E85, 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline. One of the advantages of ethanol production is that it generates valuable co-products, which can be used in various industries. For example, in corn-based ethanol production, the leftover solid material after fermentation, known as distiller's grains, can be used as a high-protein animal feed for livestock. Additionally, the carbon dioxide produced during fermentation can be captured and used in food processing, beverage carbonation, and other industrial applications. For sugarcane ethanol, the leftover bagasse can be burned to generate electricity, making the entire ethanol production process more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. By utilizing these co-products, ethanol plants can enhance their economic viability and contribute to a more sustainable biofuel industry. The final step in ethanol fuel production is blending it with gasoline to create fuel suitable for vehicles. Most ethanol produced is blended with gasoline at different concentrations, such as E10 or E85, depending on the intended use. Ethanol blended fuels can be used in flex fuel vehicles designed to run on higher ethanol concentrations or in regular gasoline vehicles with lower ethanol blends. After blending, the ethanol fuel is transported to distribution centers, where it is stored before being delivered to gas stations. Ethanol fuel is widely available across the United States and many other countries, offering consumers a renewable alternative to traditional gasoline. The widespread use of ethanol fuel helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions, supports rural economies, and decreases reliance on imported oil. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.